What's up, family? Thank you for tuning in to the Dream Nation podcast. My name is Casanova. I'll be your host, and I'm excited to be bringing to you entrepreneurs, thought leaders, and trailblazers from around the world. Stay locked in with us because we're about to go on a journey that will change your life. What's up, Dream Nation? Today on the line, we are back again with somebody who I think is going to be able to teach us a lot, a lot, and especially in the world that we live in today. We're trying to figure out how we can not only level up our mindset, but level up our bank account. So do me a favor and help me to welcome to the show, Mr. Chris Bruce. Chris, you want to go ahead and say what's up to Dream Nation? Man, what's up, Dream Nation? Casanova, I appreciate you getting me on the podcast, man. Man, this is going to be a fun one. I told you before we got started recording, I think that uh, we got a lot of similarities. And so I'm hoping that we're going to tap into a lot of gems. Not that I'm hoping, I know we will. But I always like to make sure that we give the proper introduction for anybody that's coming onto the show. So for me, I think of entrepreneurs just like superheroes. Reason being is because every day we're flying around, we're putting on capes and we're trying to solve different problems. So for you, before you became this I guess a big, what's the word that I want to use? I want to use internet mogul, right? That's what comes to my my mind Um, in the real estate game, but also just being able to make a lot of money uh, in places where other people necessarily don't be looking for. So talk to me about before all the fame, before you became to be a teacher and an entrepreneur and everything else, when you were just a young boy, tell me who is Chris Bruce? Yeah, so, man, uh, before all of this, yeah, I, I would say, so I, I, I'm from Detroit, Michigan, and um, grew up there, uh, had both my parents, but the thing about it was that my dad was an entrepreneur, he ran a, a tax business, and so I saw the success of him having that, my mom worked full time, uh, they were separated, well, they never actually were married, but they had their own spouses. And so I got an opportunity to see both sides, kind of like the rich dad poor dad. I saw the side of having a mom struggling on, you know, with my stepdad, my, my two sisters, and then also saw the side of my, my dad with my two brothers and step, your stepbrother, him, you know, making a lot of money. So I got with the best of both worlds in a sense. I, I stayed humble, obviously, because of the things that my mom only had limited resources and things that she could provide, but then I also saw that the success, if you put it in hard work, you had your own business with the things that could happen. So I was like, okay, growing up, I knew I wanted to be like my dad. I didn't want to be a CPA. I didn't want to be an accountant, but I wanted my own business. So I got a job. I did the whole working you know, for people. But the thing that, that, that really just, it hit home for me was when I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Hmm. Um, I read that book and I was just like, man, what am I doing here? Like I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm trading my hours for dollars and I know that I don't want to do this for the rest of my life. And so after reading that book, I literally said to myself, you know what? I'm going to put a date down. I'm going to quit my job this day. I don't care what happens. I'm walking out. And literally that's what I did. I, I, that, I read this book in January 2010, May 7th. 2010 was the day that I was walking on my job. And what I did was, so I went back out of it, is I took all my vacation time. I took all the vacation time, sick time. I used all of it up before May. So I had no excuse. If I stayed there, I wouldn't have no vacation, no sick time. So I was like, all right, I took all of that before May. Didn't even put a two-week notice in. I walked out May 7, 2010 and never looked back. Man, I love it. And what I really love about it is we always talk about, you know, having our dreams manifest. But for you, you took that extra step and you wrote it down. So you was like, listen, I know a couple of the guys we run with, but it, uh, it's always talking about, you know, your obsessions will become your possessions. Right. right. So when you wrote that down, you basically wrote it into existence and you knew that it had to work because you had already held yourself accountable by writing it down. So I, I love that. Now, for a lot of people right now, they're like, okay, well, how did you come to the mindset of reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad? Like for you, was that some, did you have a mentor or somebody that told you like, listen, you got to read this book or were you studying something and then you came across? Where did that come from? Yeah, good question. So what happened was um, I, and this is kind of a backstory, just a little bit to lead into this. So I bought my first rental property in 2006 and I was 21 years old 
ended up, it was in Detroit. I was living here in Florida. Um, long story short, I lost that property to foreclosure. I couldn't keep up with the mortgage, the, the economy tank. I couldn't sell it. So I lost that property. Fast forward a couple of years. Uh, in 2009, I ran across this guy here locally in Tampa that was flipping houses. And he was flipping foreclosure houses specifically. It sparked my idea of I could possibly do this. Uh, ended up investing in a training course. He became a silent mentor. He was the one who recommended Read Rich Dad Poor Dad. And it was like, it was like an eye opener. I was like, yo, this is crazy. Like this book, it, it literally like changed. It was like a paradigm shift, man. It, it changed everything for me. I absolutely, man, I hear you there. And you're speaking, because that's the whole reason why I got into real estate as well. So I love the fact that you bring that up. But go ahead. I, I want to keep hearing more about yeah, it. Yeah. So um, I read that book. I was like, OK, and like I said, I, I went ahead and I had got into um, the wholesale and real estate, which was wholesale and bank owned properties at this time. Because, again, this was the, during the heart of the recession. Properties were plentiful on the MLS. There were so many deals. It was just a challenge of finding buyers. So I made a lot of mistakes. Um, I went through the course. This was back in the time where there was DVDs and workbooks. I actually still have the course today. <laughs> Uh, and, and so I literally went through all the DVDs, implemented everything. I put 26 properties under contract. None of them closed. I had to back out of every single one of the deal. One of them almost lost a thousand dollars deposit that I didn't even have. Uh, because what I had to do was I had to basically send a check. Like I was actually going to, you know, deposit for, to, to buy the property, but I didn't even have the money and they were getting ready to cash it. I had to make up this whole excuse of the repairs and I backed out the Were contract. you sending the checks directly to the seller or were you using company. like a title company? Yeah, yeah. Well, the, it was, the, it was the, cause this was dealing with banks. So banks didn't, they, they had a seven day inspection period. So I was Got sending it. them over to the asset manager or the, or the agent I was working with. They were required that the deposit go straight to their title company they're using. Got it. Makes and the sense. title company was just about to cash my check and my, my account would have been negative. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Okay. So 26 properties, none of them closing. Now at this time, where's your mindset at? Because you're like, are you thinking like, yo, this don't work? And I, and I say that because a lot of people are now looking into real estate, but right. yet they'll do one or two deals and then they'll say like, yo, this don't work. Right. No, you, you know, so the thing about it was, is that, the, the biggest thing my mentor did for me was the power of explaining to me of self-education. And so he gave me all these different books. It was a rich dad, poor dad. Um, it was, I'm looking at the books literally right now. It was um, the four hour work week. That was another book he recommended to me. Um, the one book that really changed everything was uh, secret of the millionaire mind. It's my favorite book of all time. I read that book at least six times. When I read that and understood the way rich people think or the, versus the way poor people think, uh, as our good friend Neil says, poor passing over opportunities repeatedly, I didn't want to be poor. And so even though I was going through those challenges, I kept going because I knew that everybody that became, you know, uh, uh, so, someone that's big, someone that's very successful, they always have a story. They always have challenges and things and trials and tribulations they have to get over it. So I said, this is just trials and tribulations just a little fork in the road, little hurdles. I'm going to continue jumping them because I know at the end of the, the other side of it, everything that I want is right there. Absolutely. I love it. And it's just kind of like, I don't know if you've ever read the book, but I'll tell you another phenomenal book. And I've read the ones that you've mentioned, but it's called The Obstacle is the Way. Have you ever read mm -hmm. that book? No, it's by Ryan Holiday. Same guy who wrote, um, what's the book called? The book is called um, Trust Me, I'm Lying. Have you yes, ever heard of that book? I, I got that book. Yeah. Yep. So the same same author wrote The Obstacle is the Way. But he's basically saying, you know, if character is built through adversity, mm -hmm. which we already know. And so most people, when they come to, just like you said, a couple forks in the road or a couple bumps in the road, they're like, oh, my God, I've tried to push. I've tried to push. It's not moving. Well, here's the thing. You know, you got to be willing to kick the door down. If they don't want to let you in the front, you got to go through the side. If they don't want to let you in the slide, you got to climb through a window. And if all the windows is locked, you got to go build your own building and open up the door. And then you take their clients and then they'll right. come running. Facts. Nah, that's definitely right. And that's what it was for me, man. It was just like, yo, I, I, all this, at this time, there were so many people in my head, my mom, you know, hey, maybe, you know, this isn't for you. I had some friends that were doubting, hey, you know, man, that, that, that guy was just selling dreams. I said, no, he's not selling dreams. 
because he's showing us checks. He's showing us deals that are getting done in the city that I live in. Mm. You can't tell me that this is impossible. I know that, you know, yes, he's Caucasian. Yes, he's not as young as me, but it doesn't matter. The fact that it's happening, for me, I tell anybody, if you're going to invest any time, any money into something, at least get a return on it. Hmm. And that was my okay. thing is that, listen, I'm going to do at least one deal because if I do one deal and I say, you know what, this isn't for me, then I'll walk away. But at least I got my investment. And that's what happened. The 27 uh, property, I ended up getting that deal on the contract, sold it, made $5,000, and I call it my reality check because that was the reality that, hey, this business works. And then I was like, okay, now I'm hitting the ground running. I love it. I love it, man. So for a lot of people that maybe don't want to get into to wholesaling real estate, and first off, a lot of people, they're listening to this and they love real estate. Let's talk about what exactly wholesaling is. And I know what you've been able to help so many people understand is how they could do it virtually or maybe even long distance, because it sounds like that's how you got your start. So give me a small breakdown. How can somebody start wholesaling, you know, long distance if they necessarily don't feel like they got deals in their market because they're too expensive? Yeah, absolutely. The first thing you have to do is you have to do the research of in that particular area or market, how many cash buyers are buying properties in that area. If you can see that there's a lot of cash transactions taking place, and this is as simple as using softwares, uh, public records that has this data. Uh, or even can even contact and get in touch with a realtor. And once you start to look at, okay, in the past 90 to 180 days, there's been 20 to 40, 50 cash transactions that's taken place, or maybe even more. Then now you can say, all right, I know this area, people are buying cash. Now I just got to go find the properties. All right. So you want to have somebody on the ground, boots on the ground, you can literally post the ad on Craigslist, 25 bucks, you can have somebody go take photos of, uh, of the property for you. So now you have somebody that can visually be there to get those photos and videos of the property so that way you don't have to actually be at the property. Um, also, all it is is marketing. So as a wholesaler, what we're doing is we are marketing to find either one, a distressed seller or a homeowner that has a distressed property or both. And what we're doing in essential is we're offering a service. We're offering them a service that they don't have to go to do it through the traditional way of selling a property, which is, you know, waiting for somebody to get a uh, finance approved, waiting for, um, you know, that the homeowner having to pay closing costs, appraisals, uh, having to pay commission, all those different things. We're offering a service that they don't have to do that. They don't have to fix the property up. They can literally sell the property as is. And we step in as the middleman and put a contract on the property to buy, let's say, $50,000, but it's worth $100,000. And then we go ahead and we sell our rights to that contract, flipping the contract to a cash buyer that might actually want to fix it up and resell it uh, for their profit. We might sell it to them for $60,000. So we got a property for $50,000 that's worth $100,000. We sell it for sixty, dollars and then we end up making $10,000 profit. Our buyer is happy because now they have a $60,000 property that's worth 100 grand. So they got equity in there. Our sellers is happy because they just put $50,000 in their pocket cash in less than 30 days. I love it, man. I love it. And so for you, did you, what was the biggest challenge that you found? Because some other people are saying, oh man, that sounds really easy. But where do people go wrong at when they're trying to, you know, find these properties? Like what is the big challenge that you would make sure that somebody knows if you could just give them one tip? One thing is always be marketing. Always be marketing and understand that you are selling a solution to a problem. And as long as you understand that everybody's not going to want the solution that you have for them, because the biggest thing is that people say this is simple. They go out, they find a couple properties, maybe some vacant homes. They might reach out to the homeowner with their services and they get upset because of service that are getting denied from the homeowner. And they're like, yo, I thought that you just told me I'd just go make an offer. And it, and it, but that's not the thing is that you know, everybody's not going to want it. It's just like if you were to go into a store and let's say, I don't know, let's, let's, let's say you had some hot dogs for sale. You might have some people in there that are vegan. They don't want beef hot dogs. Right. But there's going to be some people that are hungry that don't want that beef hot dog right now with ketchup and mustard on it. Fact. And if you do, you'll be able to deliver that to them and they'll go ahead and buy it. And that's the same thing with wholesaling. When you go into homeowners, not everybody's going to want to sell their property for cash. 
quickly and take somewhat of a discounted price for selling it. Um, but there's a lot of people that do. They're behind in taxes. They're facing foreclosure. They just evicted the tenant. The place is trash. Those people are wanting our services and you just got to get your message out there to them. Man, I love that. I love it. So let's let's transition a little bit because I know that what you've been able to do is something that, that I love. And we were talking about this before we started recording, but you've been in the internet space for probably, what, over 10 years? Yeah. Um, and so that's huge because right now, especially going through a pandemic, a lot of people now have lost their physical jobs, right? So they're trying to figure out how they could get their message online, how they can necessarily get some products, whether they're info or digital products, mm. or how they can even, you know, sell their physical products if they're hand making things from their home. Talk to me about what are the steps for somebody to be able to first understand how they could get their business started. But then second, like, how do they start to market it? And I know that's a two part question. So the yeah, first exactly. thing is, how do people, you know, get started in the online space? Like, what's the first thing? Yeah, well, I would say that, you know, one of the things that I started to see early on is that we're mo- we, we were quickly moving from the brick and mortar to the click and order, right? Huh. So a lot of people were still stuck and not wanting to adapt. You look at people like uh, Blockbuster, you know, they, they, if they would have adapted quickly, you know, they, we probably would have had a Netflix, right? But they did it. And so that's the reason why they got wiped out. So when I started to see these different things, I was like, okay, I need to focus on having some type of asset that I can sell online because everybody's online. And so for anybody that's listening, if you have a product, uh, a physical product, it could be a recipe, it could be a book, uh, it, it could be a workbook, it could be anything. Uh, or if you have some knowledge that's in your head, your expertise, maybe you are good at cooking, maybe you're good at fitness, um, maybe you're good at relationships, maybe you're good at real estate, whatever it is, you have that asset that you are good at or product, and it's time to start getting that out to more and more people. The world needs more of what you have. You are literally selfish if you hold on something that you have of value. And you're not getting an opportunity to give it to other people. That's my opinion. I love so it. the thing is, is that to start a business online, the cool thing is that nowadays you don't you don't even have to have a full blown decked out website. You can literally start from your social. Social media has opened the gates for anybody to have an online business. And so that is where you st- I would tell anybody to start at is start to grow an Instagram page and market on there. Start to go to Facebook. There's Facebook groups. If you don't even have a name for yourself, you can literally have a face profile, Facebook profile and start to go post in some groups. And you know, give value first. Don't just ask for the sale, but you need to get your message out there. And social media is the number one way right now for anybody to start. I've literally saw people that have started businesses from scratch and are multi-millionaires. It's crazy. Absolutely. And I'm 100% behind that message. Now, you said something in there that you said give value first. For a lot of people, I know that they struggle with that. So if I'm somebody who I'm looking to get my message out here, talk to me about a way that I could give. Is there any hack that you could do to give value first to somebody? If you're just jumping into a Facebook group, and let's say you love Let's say real estate, because that's the conversation that we've been on. I love real estate. Um, maybe I got a 10 step process of how I bought five properties. I don't, I'm not an expert, but how I bought my five properties. How can I start giving value and turn this into a business? Absolutely. So if you have a 10 step process and what you could do is you can even break that maybe in five steps or three steps and then offer a PDF and say, Hey, guess what? I'm giving this away free. Uh, all you have to do is just DM me for it or something like that. My good, my thing that I like to do is that, you know, if you have something to value and the biggest thing is getting those people on your email list Hmm. is offering them, Hey, listen, I'll give you exchange of this. Maybe it's a free contract. Maybe it's those PDF steps in exchange for you to opt into the email list. Now you're growing an asset like an email list, which we can talk about that a little bit more, how valuable that is. And you can then now have these people on your list that you can start to you know, continue to market to, but give something away. It could be a video. You maybe have a video explaining, here, here's three of those 10 steps, free. Mm-hmm. Now they've got value and say, oh, this man, this woman knows what they're talking about. 
let me hit this person up for more. And then that's how you can bam. Because it's the it's a law of reciprocity. We have like when somebody gives us something of value, we feel indebted to them in a sense that, yo, man, this person gave me so much game for free. Yo, what what could, what do you have that I can buy? What do you have that I can I can right. invest in? Because that's how we are. Absolutely. And if you give away the good stuff for free, then all of a sudden when you put a price tag on it, they like, oh my God, I know this has got to be fun. <laughs> yep. Yep. Right. Because yep. what he gave away for free. And that's what's crazy. If you look at any most of the time, like what I've learned as well. And we're going to tap back into what you just said, because I got a couple other things that I want to make sure that you tap into. But if you look into where everything else is going is growing to the subscription model. And if mm-hmm. we can think about who the subscription people were, at least in the online space, the number one business that I always think of is Netflix. Right. Or even you see LinkedIn doing it or you see Amazon doing it in the beginning. They give it to you for almost free or it's very small fee for like a subscription. And it'll be for like one dollar for 30 days. Right. right? But how much value did they give you in that 30 days, whether you're able to watch their videos, order products on two day shipping, whatever it was, they still gave you something that they could have charged a lot more for. But in exchange, then when it was about to end, you was like, no, 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 I got to stay on. I got to stay on how much I got to pay. Right. So I love that you brought that up. But then the other part is you started talking about creating assets. And for anybody who's listening right now, they should know that through the show, we're always talking about assets. And you said in the online world, that's an asset that you need to be building. And you talked about an email list. So talk more about that. Like, how do people start to build an email list? Like, and, and why do you consider that an asset? Absolutely. So the thing about it is, is that your your main asset that you have will be the knowledge, the expertise that you have. That's something that it can never take away from you. Regardless of anything, they take away your money, they take away all these other things. The asset, the things that you have in your brain of knowledge is a super, super asset. But I call the many assets that you have to apply to be able to give that main asset away. So a mini asset is something like an email list. An email list is so important because if you do the studies and look at it, more people spend money with a business through email than they do social media, than they do radio advertising, you name it. Because there's a personal relationship that is being able to be built through email. Because a lot of people still open the email, even though there's a lot of email marketers and things like that out there. So what you want to do is, is in order to get somebody to exchange their email address, in order for them to come on your email list is that you want to have something that you're giving away. So one of the free things that you can do is that maybe you have a, a training, maybe you have something that for 60 minutes, that you can train somebody some steps on how they could start whatever, you know, their their real estate business, let's say, for instance. And what you can do is, is in order for them to get on the training, they have to put their name and email address in, right? And, you, and if you, you can just understand, maybe you have a 15 minute video, you could also do that. You can say, okay, you know what? I'm going to give you this 15 minute video. You just have to put your email address in to get it. Now you're building up this email list um, now you can continue marketing to them. You can continue giving them value. You can, you can continue marketing to them. And man, when you have an email list of 5,000, 20,000, 50,000, 100,000 people, you literally can write your paycheck anytime you want. Hmm. It's amazing. Hmm. I love that. So the value is in owning the list because, and and here's something else that I learned and I'm so glad you brought this up because anybody right now that's listening that is the only thing that you truly do own, right? Yep. If you talk about Facebook, if you talk about Instagram, any of these YouTube, you still have to compete within their rules, mm-hmm. right? But the email list, even if they shut down your account for whatever reason, whether it was something that you did unknowingly or something that you tried to bend the rules and they catch you and they shut you down, you still have an email list where you can go serve the people who already know, like, and trust you. Absolutely. So I'm so glad that you brought that up. I mean, that's a fire, fire uh, part. Now, the other part of this is something that a lot of people don't know about, but it's funnels. And I know that you've been, you know, somebody who you do webinars and funnels and we don't want to take it too overboard, but... Talk to me. Do you see a lot of value in funnels right now? Do you, Where do you see funnels going? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, there has to be some type of process to get somebody from them being a totally stranger to them being a subscriber of your email list to them being a hot prospect to them buying and being a customer and then hopefully being a repeated customer. 
So um, the thing about it is that, yes, you need funnels in order to move people around the process. I, I, I put it like this. It's just like if you if I were to meet you, Casanova, let's say we were at a party and I met you and I was like, yo, you know, um, I'm a dentist. I, I, I am specifically I help people that if they're, you know, happening issues with their teeth, cavities or whatever, that's what I do is help them. And I'm like, yo, here's my card if you ever need nothing. Now, Casanova, you might like, yo, man, listen, man, my teeth is perp white. I don't need anybody. I'm good. Like, I don't, I don't need any of your services right now. Cool. But now, let's say, for instance, we also exchange contact information when I get you the business card. He's like, yo, but here, here's my number, whatever, ma'am. All right. So now let's say a week and a half later, you start to get this toothache. And you're like, God damn, what is, what is this toothache coming from? And let's say, for instance, you're driving down the street and you see a billboard that has me on there of got a tooth fake? Call me. <laughs> right. <laughs> so now, so now you're really like, hold on. I, I, I got this dude's number and, I, and, and my tooth. Hey, let me hit him up. And so then you get an email from me and say, hey, we're giving the good special for everybody to come in right now. See, now I, you're in a funnel. And now you did, at first you didn't need my services, but a week and a half later, now you do. Now you're willing to go ahead and spend whatever it is you have to do to get that toothache, you know, uh, away, get it removed from you. And so that's the reason why people have to be put into a funnel. They're, they might not be ready to buy right now, but eventually they will move to that point of like, you know, hey, listen, I need to get away from pain or I need to move towards pleasure. And that. that's the reason why a funnel is necessary. Man, that's so much value in that. And for a lot of people, they're just about to start getting their introduction to funnels over the next three to six months, right? Yeah. Because they're looking in this online space. And so I'm glad that you brought that up because it's about staying top of mind, right? Yep. And if you're retargeting and if you're doing all these things, which you have access to, but more importantly, just if you said, just as you said, if you build an email list, you could keep dripping on them. Mm -hmm. Right. Without all of these other services, funnels and everything else. But you can still stay top of mind as long as you got their information in your asset, your mini asset, as you said. Right. right. Uh, so I, so I love that. Now, you talked about a couple of books. You said The Secret of the Millionaire. Um, yep. You talked about Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Is there any other asset that you see that's allowed you to be able to level up your knowledge, you know, as fast as you have over these last you know, even let's say the last three years, like what's been your go-to asset? Uh, mentors, man. Mentors without a hand of a doubt. Um, that, I would say the two most valued things, out there, assets I look at is one, having a mentor. Um, it's, I can't, I can't tell. I, I spent 30 grand this year on getting a mentor. Like it's, it's, it's so that invaluable. Really yeah, it's so invaluable when you get somebody that's already where you want to be at and then you're able to basically you know, get information from them as far as getting on coaching calls and asking them questions and just like them literally shorten the learning curve. So that would definitely be hands down my first thing. And then secondly, man, is like-minded individuals. My friends that are all in business, you know, we, we talk literally every single day. They're assets because they provide tons of information and value to me. We exchange, I provide tons of information and value to them. And it also forces you up if you have the right friends with accountability. Mm -hmm. Because if my friend here is doing, you know, 200 grand a month and I'm only at 100 grand a month, you're like, yo, Chris, what's going on, man? Like, like and, it's, and it's not about of like, hey, who's, you know, making more money. It's about, hey, man, let's get you up. Let's let's rise right. you up. Let's encourage you. Let's what are the things that you're doing or why you haven't got here yet? So those two things, man, is just like the biggest, like, biggest, I would say, hack or assets that you can have in your life is a mentor and the right friends that will hold you accountable, that call you out on your stuff if you're doing, that you stuff that you shouldn't be doing, and also motivating you and helping you lift you up so you can get to the level that you want to be at. Man, that's so fire. And, and when you started talking about, you know, it's about leveling each other up, I think about a, like a pack of lions, right? They're going to make sure they get, again, they take, yes, we always see the, the lion take his cub out there, but I'm sure they all go as a pack because they're going to make sure that we all eat. And they're going to train somebody that's new at this. It might be the little nephew cub. 
right? right? Or it might be somebody else in a different tribe. But when the lions all go, you don't really see them attacking each other. They go to the jungle together, right? Mm-hmm. And they all looking for, hey, where's our next prey? Right. right. So it's on you to make sure that you can become a part of the lions because otherwise you will become a prey. And we also yep. know that in times like these, unfortunately, it will be the people who do not have the financial literacy that become the preys. Right. They won't have exactly. the information to tap into the resources because, uh, trust me, the economy will bounce back. We've always been the strongest and we will mm-hmm. bounce back. But who are the people that are really going to be sitting at the top when they bounce back? It's Because, I mean, even I heard it and I'm a big fan of obviously Robert Kiyosaki right. because of Rich right. Dad, Poor Dad. But he talked about um, the rich and the wealthy. They won't really lose out of all of this. Nope. Nope. You know, think about all the what's the number one thing that everybody's going crazy over right now? SBA loans, right? Mm-hmm. Small businesses. Mm-hmm. It's the businesses because they already know that the corporation is going to get their money back. Yeah. Yeah. Right. They get they, they, And because so many of those people, they already control the economy. Exactly. exactly. So you can't do too much without the corporations. But then it's the small businesses. But then it's the people who don't have the financial literacy to be able to understand how to tap into resources so they can get ahead. Um, that'll really, you know, suffer. So I'm glad that you brought that up about making sure that you can have like-minded people. Cause I know I've been sharing with all of my guys, both, you know, that are not here in Omaha and also the people that are here in Omaha, what's everything that we're tapping into? Why you need to have an LLC where you can, you know, file some taxes against it because that's what they want to see your tax return. Right, right. So I love that you brought that up, man. This has been so phenomenal. And and I'm so excited that I was able to get you on here. And I'm, I'm knowing that it won't be the last time, but I want to ask last question that I want to ask is for anybody uh, that's out there, that's listening to you right now, that's super inspired. Definitely. They want to stay connected with you, but they got this little voice in their head. That's maybe telling them that they're not strong enough. They're not smart enough, or maybe they just don't even have enough resources right now to be able to do what you've done. What's one thing that you say to that person to get them to just take action? Uh, I mean, the thing is, is that I would tell you self-development, man, is, is, is one of the things that I think everybody is a must as a, a focus on. Um, so before you can actually go out there and take action, because the thing about it is that I could give you books and, and give you YouTube videos and things for you to watch. But if you don't really believe in yourself, if the combination between your ears is not positive and it's not coming from a place of, you know, abundance, then you're going to have a struggle regardless of what things I give you. So for me, I would tell you the best thing that you can really do is to focus on developing your mind of what entrepreneurs do on a consistent basis, because motivation will only last. It's like a bath. You know, you have to do it daily. So uh, my thing is, is that focus more on what is the success of entrepreneurs doing? So read other books that entrepreneurs have done. You know, uh, Tony Robbins, I, I love all of his books. I got his money book. I got Unshakable. I got all these different books from him. Um, Rich Dad Porter, that read Robert Kiyosaki books. Uh, Tim Ferriss. Uh, even for anybody that, you know, you're like, yo, I, I, don't, I don't get those people. You know, I want somebody I can relate to. Charlemagne the God, Kevin Hart, Tyrese, get out your own way. These mm. books were books that literally I was like, yo, this is crazy. Like even right. Kevin Hart's book, Kevin Hart's book. I can't make this that, that like his, his books. Like I was like, when you see the struggle and you see where Kevin Hart is right now, he's worth for a hundred million dollars or something like that. He started from the bottom and you start to read his story and you'll see that, man, I'm looking at people that started from the bottom that went through way more hell than I'm actually going through right now, it's possible. And so that's what you have to do is feed your brain with the, the possibilities and the abundance of all the different resources and things around. Then you can go out there and start taking action because now you won't give up when a midst of a little thing that gets in the way. Man, I love it. I love it. For anybody that wants to stay connected with you, where can they find you at? Uh, best to look me up on Instagram at Detroit Mogul. I'm on, I'm on there. And uh, yeah, that's probably the best way. Got it. Well, man, my brother, I want to say thank you again for coming on. It's been a pleasure. I'm sure there's a lot of value that was taken out of this. And I'm sure somebody's going to change their life uh, because of the information that you provided today. And hopefully, first off, they go at changing their mindset. Right. And so thank you again. We look forward to having you on again. And uh, until the next time, remember Dream Nation and the dream we trust. But like my man said, you got to take action. Otherwise, it'll only merely be a fantasy.
Till the next time. That's the episode for today. Let me know if you got any value out of this. If you liked anything about it, reach out to me on Instagram or Twitter, any of the social media networks. And of course, leave me a review. iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, wherever you're hearing this at. I would love to have a review to show, you know, what you're getting out of this. Is there anything that I could do better? Is there any way that I can add more value to you? So hopefully you all take some action today. That's my show. I love you all. Be great. But remember, we must take action.